In this tutorial you will learn how to use Kangaroo physics-based plugin for Grasshopper to reproduce project kinetic wall designed by the studio Barkov Liminger. Also you will discover how you can modify existing mesh in combination with the form finding software. If you stay until the end of this video you will discover how you can get this definition for free. Enjoy! Hi guys, what's up? Lazar here from How to Rhino. Welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to use Rhino and Grasshopper, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell button so you don't miss anything as we upload new videos each week specifically for architecture. Let's see what this tutorial is all about. Alright guys, as I mentioned in the beginning of this tutorial, we will try to reproduce project called Kinetic Wall designed by Barkov Liebinger. The project contains two parts, the first one is the surface, that should represent translucent fabric. And other part are motorized nodes positioned in the grid that are fixed with the surface and as they moving in and out, the surface is modifying. Alright, the first step is to create the line using line container. So right click on the line and go set one line and we can create line. Based on this line, we can create the plane. So once we add construct plane container, we need three inputs. So the first one is the origin of the plane, x direction of the plane and y axis direction of plane. For the origin point of the plane, we'll use start point of the line. So this one, x axis direction of plane will be the direction of the line and the y direction of the plane will be z vector. All right, and we created the plane. Once we have the plane, we can create the rectangle. I will add component rectangle and in the P, we'll place plane we constructed. And X and Y, we need to set dimension of the plane. Once we choose these two values, we can create the plane like this. All right. And the next step is to divide surface. We can directly place the rectangle in the S input of the divide surface component. And now I'm going to show you one cool trick. In order to keep almost the same division of both of these um, sides of the rectangles, no matter what are they uh, dimension, let's say 50 here. And when I turn on this, we'll get almost squares as uh, subsurfaces. And if I set back here to 80, again, the subsurfaces will be almost a squares. So the trick is to divide one dimension with another and here we get the ratio ratio in this case is uh, 1.55 so once we place rectangle in the s of the divide surface uh, component in u we'll place ratio times the factor 8 and in the v we'll place that factor 8 so it means the shorter distance will be divided by 8 and the larger distance will be divided 8 times uh, this uh, ratio, which is 1.55. So in this case, u will be divided by uh, 12 and another direction or v will be divided by 8. No matter which number we place here, we'll always get almost square division in the divide surface output. I forgot to mention that these points from the divide surface we'll use later for the anchor points, but we'll get to that later. The next uh, step is to create the mesh based on this rectangle. So I will add a mesh surface component. In the S I will place the rectangle and in the U and the V I will apply the same trick as I did for the divide surface. In the U I will place this ratio of 1.55 times 52 and I will get the number 80. In V direction we will have 52. Once we get the divide surface points and the mesh surface I will separate these points from these points. So the edge points will be in one list and uh, the points that are placed inside the mesh will be in another list. We can do this by pool points. So if we add component pool point in the P, I will place the points which we get from the divide surface and in the G, I will place rectangle. Basically, we'll project the point to the closest edge of the rectangle. And in the D, we'll have their distances. If the distance is zero, then we'll use equality and basically check if the distance is zero, that points 
or that values will be in one list. If it's larger than zero, these points will be in another list. So if we place these numbers in the A, in the B, zero, we can get here Boolean values based on this pattern true false, we can divide these two points into separate lists. Here we have points inside the mesh and here we have the points that are placed on the edges. These points that are placed inside the mesh, we need to modify them because the anchor point must be the vertex of the mesh. Right now, if I zoom in here, we can see that this point is not positioned inside the vertex of these meshes. Instead of having point here, we need to have this point. So maybe I can zoom in closer. So instead of having point here, I need point to be on the mesh vertex. In this case, point will be here and so on. To get these points, we need to use component called closest point. But before that, using component deconstruct mesh, we can get all these vertices. And this vertices goes in the C of the closest point component. And in the P, we'll place these points from the divide surface that are located inside the mesh. And the result will be closest point on the mesh vertices based on the divide surface points. If I compare, you can see that these points in the result are actually the vertex of the mesh. All right, so now once we have these uh, points, we need to create the holes on the mesh. So if I zoom in uh, this surface, we want to create uh, these holes on the mesh. So basically we want to remove this part here. We can do it by connecting component face normals with the mesh and we can get the center of each face of the mesh and using component closest points, not closest point, there is difference because here in the outputs we have one more slot and that's the N. Basically, we can extract multiple closest points. So in the P, we'll place closest points which we get from, uh, from here and in the C, we'll place the center of each face. In the N, we'll place number four because we want to get these four points based on the closest point, on, based on this uh, output. So once we have these four points, we can extract their index and later on we can remove these four uh, faces in order to create these holes on the mesh. All right, so I set here four and I will turn on and these two guys I'm going to turn off. All right, so you can see that we have these four points. In the eye, we need to flatten them in order to get their uh, indices. So here we can get index number of each point in the output. So in order to remove these faces, first we need to uh, explode the mesh. So the mesh we created here are going to explode using mesh explode. And in the output, we have each face exploded using cal index will remove this set of faces so in the cal we'll place each face of the mesh and in the eye we'll set these uh, index numbers if i turn on this cal index you can see we uh, managed to remove these faces that are located near a uh, closest point we get from here all right once we get these holes on the mesh we can take out vertex that are placed on the naked edges and based on this vertex we can create the circle but first i'm going to take uh, these faces and combine them in a single mesh using component combine and clean we can find it in the kangaroo plugin uh, mesh sector once we place the m output in the naked vertices component also this component is in the kangaroo plugin we can take out naked points if I turn on it, you can see them in the Rhino viewport. But because we need only points that are placed inside uh, the mesh, we are going to use the same logic as before. So we are going to take out these lines, find the closest point uh, using uh, these naked points. Then if the distance is zero, 
then these points we are going to extract. All right, so, but how we can extract these lines? It's very easy using mesh edge component. In the E1, you can see uh, that these lines are naked edges. I will join them, but we don't need uh, this uh, biggest one. So that's why we are going to calculate the length, sort these curves based on the length, and using cal index with the index minus one, it means the last index in the list will be removed. We get here only these naked lines. And as I mentioned, again, we will use pull point. Point, they're going to be pulled, uh, will be naked points. And there will be pull on these curves. And in the output, we have only these points. And now, we get a small issue because uh, this set of points are in different branches, which is okay, but these branches are mixed, they are not sorted. Uh, let me uh, show you. I'm going to add three branch components, connect with a call pattern, and in the branch, I'm going to add pattern viewer. It's here. And I'm going to extract some of these lists. Okay. All right, so the branch with index zero is this one. The branch with index one is this guy here. So you can see uh, once I move this slider, you can see that these branches are not sorted out. So in order to sort them, we will uh, find average point of each of these set of points. Basically the average point are positioned in the center. I will flatten them and using component sort points. These points are sorted and in the I, I have their index numbers. But now we need to sort branches. And one more cool trick I will show you. For sorting branches, we'll use component replace path. So in the D, we'll place this set of points, which we get from the call pattern. In the S, we'll place a branch index, but in the order we got from here. So in the list item first, I will place these branches using pattern viewer. And in the I, we'll place these sorted index numbers. So instead of having this uh, order from one, two, three, four, we have the order which we get from the index number. And you can see that order here. So it means that the branch 0, 53 will be the branch 0. Branch 0, 0, 0, 55 will be the branch 1. Branch 0, 0, 54 will be branch 2 and so on. So in the S, we'll place uh, this list of branch index and in the R we will set which index we are going to give them. To the first one will be given this number, to the second one will be given this number and so on. All right, so here in the D, in the output, we will get sorted branches or sorted this list of points. And I will show you here, if we set a uh, three branch with the replace path output. And if I change this slider, you can see how the branches are sorted out. And once we have sorted a list of points, I can use component circle fit in order to create the circle based on these points. And once we have the circles, we are going to move them along normal vector on the surface, okay? So every second circle will be moved in order to get uh, that kind of effect as I show you in the beginning. Every second will be moved. So circle will be placed in the G input of the move component. And in the T, we need to set the vector. The vector we will uh, get if we take the origin plane, which we generated in the beginning. And if we deconstruct uh, this plane using component deconstruct, Z vector represent the normal vector on that plane. So that normal vector 
we will use as a vector for move component and their amplitude we can get by uh, these two values let's say 15 and 0 and if I use repeat data in order to create repetition of these two values 15, 0, 15, 0, 15, 0 and so on and they will be repeated as much as we have uh, branches or as much as we have circles in the list first we need to flatten them and if I connect a list length with a circle fit we can get number of circles so these two values will be repeated 77 times and these values will be the amplitude of the vector and if I turn on you can see how every second circle is moved along a normal vector on the mesh uh, based on these two values if I change uh, this slider we can see how uh, position of every second circle is modified and uh, probably because these uh, circles are too big we can scale them uh, center of scaling will be the center of the circle and I will turn off this and once we have these scaled circles we will use component curve closest point in order to uh, project uh, this a naked points on this circle this set of points will be projected with the corresponding circle uh, to them so in the output we get these uh, points projected on the circle and these points will be the anchor point of our final shape all right we have uh, so far anchor points the first set of anchor points uh, are this one and the second set of the anchor points will be points we get uh, here that are the points that we get in the beginning once we check which of the points are located inside the rectangle because these points are not in, uh, located inside of the rectangle using closest point based on the vertex of the mesh we will find their position on the closest uh, uh, mesh vertex and these will be our second set of the anchor points the last thing uh, we need to define are kangaroo springs and the springs will be the edge of the mesh once we connect with the mesh edge uh, these guys we are going to transform in the kangaroo spring first we'll uh, take naked edges and connect with a line so here we have these naked lines and naked lines we will connect with the length line component from the kangaroo they're placed in the ghost line panel this one so here we will create kangaroo springs and the length we can define as the length of each line here we can calculate them but if you want to modify you can connect uh, multiplication and uh, I'll multiply them with a the number slider and in the strength input uh, you can set uh, strength uh, arbitrarily and the same thing we'll uh, do for the uh, interior edges so interior edges we connect with the line container and here we have all interior edges of the mesh they will be connected with the line in the length again will be zero but if you don't want to be zero you can multiply the length with the factor you set here and in the strength again we can set it arbitrarily later on once we turn on the final mesh uh, using kangaroo we can see how modifying these two sliders the final shape is um, generated all right so we have uh, kangaroo springs these two output i will merge and we have kangaroo anchor points i forgot to mention how we can create these anchor points this is also the core component from the kangaroo it's placed in the goals point uh, panel uh, this one so in the p we'll place not the final points we get here but the points we get on the naked edge so these guys uh, these guys go into p input but in the target point of the anchor point component will be uh, these uh, green points all right this is the first anchor point and for the other set of anchor points 
uh, this closest point, uh, this green one, will place in the P and target points we don't have in this case because uh, these points are fixed now. Quick announcement guys, only first 20 people who leave a comment which project want to see in one of our next tutorials will get this definition for free. And once we have these two, also we need to create component uh, kangaroo uh, show mesh. It's placed in the main tab, uh, this one. That allows you to, to see how the mesh is generated using kangaroo plugin. These three guys I'm going to combine with Antwine component. So you don't need to use Antwine, you can combine directly with the shift, but I like to combine them first in one component and with the one component I place them in the goal objects. We can add the button and also boolean toggle. These two guys you can find uh, here, boolean toggle and the button. So button will use to reset the shape and boolean toggle true and false will define when to start and to finish solving uh, this shape. And we can start now, but first I'm going to turn all of this. All right, I'm going to turn on the final output. Let's see how our shape is generating. Here you can reset. All right. I didn't mention how we get this mesh because in the output you don't you don't have just mesh, you have also lines, some points, but in order to take out only mesh, you can use list item with the index 0. By default it's 0, but I can add uh, 0 just to make it more clear. And this mesh we can connect with the custom preview. Okay, and if we change uh, the moving factor here, we can see how the shape is modifying. Also, if you want to change instead of zero, let's say minus something, these uh, circles will go into a negative direction. All right. All right, then once you're satisfied with shape, uh, you need to turn off the sewing and bake uh, the mesh. Once you become our Patreons, you will get this part of the definition where you can randomize position of the anchor points, something like this. And also you will be able to randomize their values. All right, in this video you'll learn how you can create the basic simulation with Kangaroo. I hope this was helpful. If you want to see more of these videos about physical simulation, please let us in the comments. And if you made this far, thank you so much, I really appreciate you. Hit the like button if you like this video, consider subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell button for the future videos. If you are interested in having step-by-step -step approach how to learn Ryan and Grasshopper for architecture, I would like to invite you to schedule your free one-on-one -on -one consulting call where you will get all details about the course and how you can be part of it. It's the first link in the description. Last but not least, I would like to send special thanks to all our Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for supporting what we do and allowing us to create high-quality content for you. If you want to get project files of this and all our YouTube tutorials, you can get by supporting us on Patreon. The link is in the description. Until next time, take care and see you soon.